today we will be doing two things firstly we will do the working capital management part then uh, we will do the break even analysis right so i will be doing the working capital calculation and working capital management part first uh, i will go to the board you can uh, now you can uh, see the board properly yes sir okay so since i am writing on the board i won't see if you uh, text me something so just uh, on your mics and uh, let me know right what we did last week i just go take you through what we did last week so we did the pnl uh, is the board visible turnover or revenue equals price into quantity direct cost any cost which changes with the number of units produced or we can term it as the cost we have to incur in order to produce one unit cost we have to incur to produce one unit raw material labor electricity the other main cost under direct then you have gross profit then you have overhead which is admin uh, selling or marketing finance profit before interest and depreciation interest dip operating profit other income net profit right these are the cost which won't change with the quantity right so we can fix this as fixed cost this as variable cost because the amount here changes with the quantity amount here won't change with the quantity right so this is the pnl we need then balance sheet we have fixed assets any asset which has a, a useful life more than 12 months then you have investment more than one year then you have current assets mainly inventory debtors cash then we have current liabilities creditors then ods and short term loans net current assets or net current liabilities then we have total assets right then finance by we have share capital third reserves net worth then term loans leases total capital employed right so these are the assets which can be converted to cash within 12 months period these are the liabilities we need to settle within 12 months period this one or this is called equity capital this one is called debt 
capital right so this is the pnl and balance sheet all our financial evaluation revolves around this then we went on to discuss liquidity ratios current as uh, current ratio then we discuss about quick ratio then efficiency ratios we discuss inventory turnover data collection and creditor payment we discuss this thing then we went on to discuss gearing or solvency that is to deal with these two how the business has been funded entire this portion is to do with these two right then we discuss profitability liquidity ratio that is to deal with the pnl right then we discuss the market ratios which are to be used only for listed companies right so this is what we discuss so uh, overflowing from this what we discuss today we will be discussing working capital management and break even analysis right you have to hand out you can go through that so working capital management what is working capital right working capital is the funds we need funds we need to operate a business on a day to day basis that is called working capital funds we need to run the business the money invested in fixed assets inventory that is fixed but day to day operation you need money that means these two items right money we need required to run the business on a daily basis that is working capital right so working capital management is managing current assets and current liability specifically speaking managing inventory managing debtors and managing creditors right that is the working capital management basically to manage your day to day operation funding requirement for day to day operations and managing current assets and current liabilities is called working capital management right then we have something called gross working capital right gross working capital hope you can see the board properly yes sir yes we can see right right gross yes. working capital is the current assets of a business right if someone asks what is gross working capital that is the entire current assets of the business right then we have something called net working capital that is current assets minus current liabilities that means inventory debtors minus creditors right or current assets minus current liabilities this is the portion funded by by long term funds this is the portion of current assets which had been funded by long term funds see current assets minus current liability that means you take uh, like we have current assets we say 10 million 
current assets 8 million, current liabilities 8 million. So you have 2 million which has been funded by equity capital or debt capital out of that long term funding. So that is called net working capital. You have gross working capital, which is the total current assets. Net working capital, which is current assets minus current liabilities. Right? That is the portion which is funded by long-term fund. That is equity or equity is this net worth or the term loan, term loan, not laser, term loan. Right? Then we have another term called average working capital. Right? That is networking capital, capital plus some contingency. That is maybe 5% to 10% we add a margin. Right? That is called average working capital. Right. So, working capital is the money we require to day-to-day -day operation of the business. That is the liquid cash we need, liquidity position of the business, which is checked with these two. Right? Liquidity position is checked with current ratio and the quick ratio. So, working capital is the money we require or the liquidity we require to run the business on a day-to-day -day basis. We have gross working capital which is the current asset. Net working capital is the difference between current asset and current liabilities. That means the amount of current asset which had been funded by long-term funding. So working capital management is managing your current assets and current liabilities, specifically speaking, inventory, debtors and creditors, right? That is working capital. If I erase this, now we have something called working capital cycle. Enjoy the night in Right. Now we talk about working capital cycle. It is the time duration between acquisition of resources and collecting cash from a customer, from the customers, right? That if I take you this way, it is the time period between investing money to purchase raw material or service, go through the entire production process or the supply chain and Collecting money from the end user, customer or the data. Look at this board. I'm a shirt manufacturer. I go to the market today, zero day. Then I pay cash. I bring raw material, the shirt material, buttons and threads and everything. Right? So, my money now converted to raw material. So, like I can't run to the bow, uh, uh, I can't run to the market, bring raw material, produce, sell back to the market, you can't do it. So, always you need to have a, some sort of raw material stock. Raw material, we say, we have. 14 days of raw material. That means 
Okay, I'll come, but it means raw material. Then I issue this material to the production floor. Right? I issue the raw material to the production floor. Then this material which I in, uh, provide to the floor, they will cut into pieces and they start manufacturing the shirt. So that portion is called work in progress. Right? That is called work in progress. That means if you take the production line here, first step only the material will be there. By the second step, pieces will be there. Third step, sewing started. First piece attached to the hands. Like that, it will continue. By the last work item, you will get the shirt, full shirt in place. Right? That is the finished goods. Right? Then you have finished goods. So we say three days here and 14 days finished goods, right? Then what you do, you sell. You sell on credit. Normally it is credit or part it is credit. So you will create data. We say on average we give 40, 30 days credit, right? So, working capital cycle is the time between investing money in raw material and collecting cash from your debtors. This period is called working capital period. Right? What did 14 days mean? And what this is three days mean? Right? 14 days mean if you stop purchasing raw material, you have enough raw material to feed the production line for 14 days. Right? What does work in progress say? If you stop providing raw material for the production line, you have the entire material in the production flow will be converted to the finished goods within three days. It will take three days to complete all the goods because you have stopped the inflow of raw material. Now, whatever there is on the floor, they will convert it to the finished goods and that will be here. Right? Then, once what is finished goods, if Entire production comes to a halt. You have 14 days of goods which can be fed to the market for 14 days. You have finished goods to feed the market for 14 days. That is what finished goods stocks mean. Then you have debtors. That means once you sell, only after 30 days you can collect your money. So that is the meaning of these days. Right? If you stop purchasing, you have enough raw material to feed the production flow for 14 days. <coughs> if you stop raw material feeding to the production line, it will take three days to convert the last piece to a uh, finished good. So, fin finished good means if you stop production, you have enough material to feed the market for 14 days. That is 30 days. If you stop send, uh, sending goods to the market, you need 30 days to collect your entire data. So in this process, it is 14 days plus 3 days plus 14 days plus 30 days. 28, 31, so it is 61. So, in this example, your working capital period is this much, right?
you have another two words, which is operating cycle and cash cycle. Right? If you go on the first day, give cash and collect your material, come to the production and start production, then operating cycle and cash cycle both are equal. Right? If you invest your money on the first day, cash cycle means actual cash involved period. But if the period actually you invest your cash, right? Operating cycle is from the day one of operation to the last day of collecting money, right? Now you have this cycle. Similar to this, you go to the market, you bring your raw material, but you don't pay. You give a post-dated check for seven days, right? Go to the market, bring raw material on credit, so you have creditors, right? On the seventh day, your post-dated check hits your account. So on that day, you need money, but you have already started your production because you brought the goods, right? Actually, you are money spent on the seventh day. So, from the day you invest your money to the day you collect your money, this is called cash cycle, this period. That means 61 minus 7, which is 50, 61. 54 days. This is operating cycle. This is cash cycle. Right? Operating cycle equals <coughs> before that. Now, this is the theoretical way how we do. Then you have the how do you calculate it actually? using your balance sheet, right? This is from here to here, this period is equal to inventory turnover period. From here to here, it is your data collection period, right? This period is your creditor payment period as we discussed earlier. So, your operating cycle equals inventory turnover period plus data collection period. Cash cycle equals your operating cycle minus creditor payment period. Right? This is operating cycle. This is cash cycle. Right? Hope you can remember the three ratios. Firstly, inventory turnover period equals average inventory divided by cost of sales or direct cost into 365. Right? Then data collection period equals Average data divided by credit sales into 365. 
then you have creditor payment period which is equal to average creditors divided by cost of sales of direct cost into 365 right these are the three ratios you need to use this this comes in number of days right number of days when you know the number of days you can reverse the working capital requirement so it is going front and back again so this is the working capital period this uh, finish there's another thing when we talk about working capital it is two poles variable working capital and permanent working capital right what is this i told you working capital is the money required for day to day operation of the business right then what is permanent working capital and what is uh, variable working capital think about uh, just a very very basic example grocery shop right when you have a grocery shop in order to run the grocery shop you need to have minimum basic stocks we need at least two types of rice we need at least two two packets of three packets of milk you need little bit of dal right then you need dry fish you need soap but you need to maintain a minimum stock once you sell everything run bring sell you can't do that you need to have minimum stock and on top that can vary you should have a minimum stock at given in any given time and other thing you can vary like three sacks of two sacks of rice at least 50% of this you need to have permanently <coughs> whether you fill it full that is separate then dry fish two types dal you need 10 kilos minimum to maintain so so whatever permanently you have to maintain we call permanent working capital this fluctuation is the variable working capital december you increase right you have we say it is 50 kilos always you 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 will do the reorder when it comes to 25 so whether it is 50 up to 50 or 30 you can decide based on your requirements so that variation is called variable working capital so this is the total variable working capital this part is permanent working capital this part is variable working capital based on the demand you replenish the working capital right so this is very practical don't think that this is a very technical thing yes it is technical but it is very practical you place it to your own self right if i draw draw a graph that rupees investment and the time when it is a very good, if there is an ongoing business, normally your fixed assets increases with time. Fixed assets. Right? Fixed assets increases with time. Why? Your production improves, your business has to grow. So it increases. Then, similarly, when your fixed assets 
which is plant machinery and those things that is production capacity increases business increases so your minimum level of working capital that also increases permanent working capital increases permanent working capital then you have your variable working capital when this increases that also increases so these three types you have to fund this is the long term funds this can be funded by a short term funding so out of the working permanent major part has to be funded by term funding balance can be funded with this normally from a working capital for around 40% around 40% is considered as a permanent working capital the balance is variable so always long term fund should be invested for this and short term fund should be invested here right so this is the permanent working capital and uh, variable working capital this is the working capital cycle that is the time duration between your investment of your resources to the time you collect your money right inventory turnover period plus debtor turnover period is called operating cycle minus creditors period is your cash flow actual period you invest your money into working capital that is the actual period so it is calculated using these three ratios when you know the ratios you can find the dates when you are given the number of days you can work out the amount right so this is all about working capital is it clear or you want me to explain anything right now i can see the text box so let me know thank you sanjeev what about others i need everyone's answer because you will see always they will ask questions about working capital and if you want to work as a credit officer you need to be very very thorough about working capital because day to day function it is all about working capital this is the most critical item only five answered malaga what is the situation malaga given dasun that's on are you there okay right so is clear so we have gross working capital networking capital then we have average working capital then we have terms like permanent working capital and variable so what is the use of knowing this cash cycle can someone tell me what is the use of knowing this cash cycle or the working like rather working capital cycle that's the cash cycle basically what is the use you are my banker i come to you and i will tell so i have a order i'm doing shirt manufacturing i want 5 million to be paid within 
150 days right this is my pnl and balance sheet can you give me i'll give you a, a, a security as well now how do you decide whether to give me 150 days or 50 days 90 days or 180 days how do you decide that? i'm in front of you i ask you for money i'll give you my financials so you can see these are actual financials i'm a regular customer my crib is clear i'm asking you how do you decide how much to give is a different case how how long to give is my question I'm here to get the answer. Pending that, I will show you another thing. What does this mean? Cash cycle means. That means you can see this. Like that means if you invest, we say it is number of days 54. Right? So we say 50. When you invest your money, after 50 days, business will throw out money. Again, re reinvest. On the 100th day, it will pop out money. 150 days, it will pop out money. Right? So, this cash cycle is that you invest money today, 50 days, it will come out and again reinvest, it will come out 100 days, 150 days, 200 days, 250th day, like that it will come out after every 50 days. Right, I have an answer. Time period between acquisition of inputs for or manufacturing and the date time taken to sell those good finished. Time period between acquisition of inputs, that is here, from manufacturer and the date, time taken to sell these goods, that means here, right, you sell it. How we decide is using the cash cycle, that means time you invest and the time money comes out of the system 50 days the time gap between investment acquisition of resources and collection from your debtors that is called working capital cycle or cash cycle right so i came and i asked you for 100 and so I'll change it to 120 days now. Okay, I'm asking for 120. That means here. What will happen if you give me 120 days? I got it will happen this. I'm giving you 1 million or 5 million. Today you go to the market, bring the goods. Invest, do the production. On the 50th day, I will get my money. I'm not paying the bank because it is not due. It is 120 days short term facility. So I will reinvest. 100th day, I will get money again. Around 100, right? I will get to my money. I may reinvest. I may do go and buy a car. 
Oh, I throw a party. And now I don't have money to pay your bank when it is due on 20th. So it will, we say, it comes out and invest. So 120 a day loan will get mature and due now. But money, business person does not have money. However, he comes and pay you after 30 days. Why? is getting his money on 150. You may be having a lot of customers, always due in areas, but they will come and pay you after a few days, 7 days, 10 days, 14 days, for 30 days, they will come and settle. They are not a risk, but it is a liquidity issue. Why? We have not matched their cash cycle or the working capital cycle and the facility due date. For this customer, we should give only 55 days or 60 days maximum. If you give 45 days here, what will happen? 45 Five days always is in areas. Five to six days, one week always is in areas. If you give more than that, we give seven to five days, you are in between the cash cycle. So it has to be somewhere nearby, not here, at least here, not this side. Few days, a buffer we give. 50, so you give a 55 day buffer. Right? So the use of this working capital cycle is to decide how much we are giving, what is the period we are giving to a customer. Am I clear to you? Am I clear or do you want me to explain it again? So can you just explain it again? Okay. What about other? I will explain. What about others? Right. Uh, it is like this. Uh, what is what do you mean by working capital cycle? It is the time between acquisition of resources and collecting cash from your debtors. You invest money today, it, money will flow through your production and pop out after the debtor period. Right? So, based on this, it is 50 days. You invest your money, after 50 days, you will get your money. Right? Every 50 days, you will get your money. Right? If you give more than, that means money comes out of the system. Right? That money, they will reinvest in the business. They will go and purchase and all those stuff. So, if you give more time, they don't have money to pay. Because they have invested money in the business. So, whatever the period you are giving, it should be around your cash cycle. If it is 50 days, give a small 5 day addition and your maximum day should be 55. It should not be so. Yes, sir. Did you ask any question? Right? So, if it is 50 days, if my cash cycle is 50, you should give slightly about the, that because there can be a slight delay in collecting money. So 55. But if you give 75 days, you have collected your money and you have reinvested. So again, money will come out somewhere 100 days. Right? This entire period, customer will be in areas because they don't have money, they have invested in the business. Right? Is it clear? Was that part yeah. of the question? 
okay clear sir right right so this is all about working capital you have the uh, handout you can go through that try it Fine. This is the handout. Working involves managing the different components of current assets and current liabilities, sufficient liquidity, money needed for day-to-day -day operations. So basically, I told you everything on this handout: gross working capital, net working capital, type of working capital. So then I discuss this one. The working capital management timing gap between acquisition of resources and collection of cash from customers is called the operating cycle. Operating cycle is this cash cycle equals operating cycle minus traders period. Right? Whenever they ask working capital cycle, this is the working capital cycle. When you purchase uh, goods on cash. Operating cycle and cash cycle equal because this is going to be zero. Working capital management. This I have uh, done, right? The okay. See, raw material. How it happens? You go purchase raw material. Working pro progress. Finished goods. Account receivables. Again cash, right? Now we have manufacturing, trading. And services, right? Okay, come back to the board again. One minute. You can see this point. You have few things: manufacturing, trading. Services. What are the items? Raw material, work in progress, finished goods, letters. Right? This is the gross volume. So on a manufacturing, you have this, you have this, you have this. And you have this. On a trading business, you don't have raw material, you don't have working capital, working progress, but you have finished goods and data. Right? On a service organization, you don't have raw material, you don't have uh, working progress, you don't have finished goods, but you have data. Right? So, manufacturing has the largest working capital requirement, right? Manufacturing is larger than the trading because one, two, three, four ticks. It is two ticks. So, services has only very small working capital requirement. Right? It has only one tick. So the, when it is coming to working capital requirement, manufacturing entities, they have the largest requirement, then the trading entities, and then the service entities. That is the only thing I missed on the handout. So this is what, then working capital on cycle, cash finished goods to debtors, estimate of working capital, you have the current assets, which is the gross working capital, current liabilities minus this, this is the net working capital, A minus B, at margin, this, this is the average working capital. These are the activity ratios, right? Right, I have a sum. 
can everyone work on this you have inventory you have account receivables you have account payable sales you consider 100% of your sales as credit sales right within 5 minutes we'll finish it then we go to the break even analysis now you calculate the working capital cycle which is the cash cycle since you have account payables as well so it is the cash cycle so you calculate the number of days in each item then you calculate the operating cycle then you minus the creditors period then you get the cash cycle can all of you work on this so we will have 5 minutes to do this from now okay start you have the handouts right or do you want me to show the figures answer is there in your handout but don't look at it just calculate just can you sir can you show that uh, tube please inventory you are 19 9500 13500 next year account receivable 11500 18500 account payable 7000 to 10000 Sales 75 to 90, cost of goods sold 52 to 56. What about others? Only one has answered. Okay. Sanju is right. I would like to see everyone. You like this fine? Do have completed? If anyone has an issue, please let me know. Right, Malaka?
what about others Yes, Parni, you are right. right so hope uh, others will do we'll start the break even otherwise we will not be able to finish it today so if you have any questions in calculating if you find any difficulty please let me know even after class i will let you know right just put a question so i will answer after i finish this break even analysis right what does this mean it is to find out the revenue which is equal to the cost so that means we need to find out a quantity when sold it will generate a revenue which will cover our fixed cost and variable cost both right turnover equals variable cost plus fixed cost plus profit right this is your business formula. This is your PNL written on a horizontal manner. What is the PNL? Turnover, direct cost, right? Then gross profit, overheads, PBID, interest, dip, net profit, right? This is this, this is this, this is this, and this is that. Right? So, this is a PNL written horizontal. So, break even analysis is to find out the point where profit equal zero right so turnover or revenue generated equals to the variable cost and the fixed cost variable cost and the fixed cost required to generate that turnover revenue generated will be equal to your fixed cost and Variable cost related to that term. Okay. No profit, no loss position. We want to find out no profit, no loss position. There are, we have a few words like C, V, P. This is a analysis between volume, cost and profit. Cost, volume, profit analysis. If someone asks you what is cost volume profit analysis, that is break-even analysis. Break-even analysis is the 
and this is to find out the point at which no loss no profit to the business that is breaking even right so then we have uh, we'll work out this turnover equal price into quantity right then you have variable cost per quantity cost per quantity per unit into q plus fixed cost right so we will have the profit also here right profit you take this out to this side price q minus variable cost per unit into q equals fixed cost plus profit so these are common so you take can take out price minus variable cost per unit into q equals fixed cost plus profit so q can be equal to fixed cost plus profit to price minus variable cost per unit right this is called contribution the other word is contribution that is the amount of money we have towards settling the fixed cost and generating profit contribution is the money generated by selling one unit towards the settlement of fixed cost and generating profit contribution is the money we generate after settling all the direct cost the money left out for us to pay for the fixed cost and profit right so break even quantity qbe equal this right this is equal to profit equal to zero so this is your break even formula fixed cost divided by contribution per unit fixed cost divided by contribution per unit is called break even point right break even analysis so first volume profit analysis means analyzing of revenue quantity and profit and cost that is cvp analysis that is the break even analysis contribution is the money generated by selling one unit after settling all the fixed cost uh, all the variable cost towards settlement of fixed cost and profit that is contribution then we have margin of safety that is the difference between actual or budgeted sales and break even sales that is the difference the margin of safety is the difference between actual low budgeted sales and the break even sales that means what i anticipate to sell 75000 pieces right in order to 
generate no profit or loss that is break even i have to sell 60000 that means my margin of safety is 15000 units 15000 rupees if it is 75 and 6 right that means you can bring down your sales you can be okay till your sales levels drop from seven expected sales level drop from 75 to 60. if it is go below that you are making losses and margin of safety is the difference between actual low budgeted sale it can be rupees or it can be quantity and the break-even sales which can be rupees or which can be quantities what is the use of what is the use of break-even analysis break-even analysis is used for short-term planning how much quantities to be sold what should be the product mix right can we accept this kind of order that kind of analysis we do with this then because we know the quant minimum quantity we need to sell in order to have a position where no profit no loss we have recovered all our variable costs and the fixed cost as well no profit no loss right so margin of safety is the other part so these are the words we have terminology we have under break even so break even is the quantity or the sales level where we will not generate any loss or any profit right this is used for short term evaluation like product mix product mix can be done then minimum level of sales to find out whether to accept the order, that kind of thing, we can use this calculation, right? Cost, volume, profit analysis is another term given to a uh, break-even point. Analysis, contribution is the money generated from each unit after collecting all the variable costs towards, which can be used towards the settlement of fixed cost and generating a profit right so that is the contribution margin of safety is the difference between actual low budgeted sales in quantity or rupee term <coughs> and the break even sales quantity or rupee term so that is the margin where you can drop your sales without affecting your profitability without making a loss Right, in the beginning of the year, I anticipate for this much. But even I do this, I'm not going to make a loss. Right, this is the margin of safety. Right, same thing can be shown on this day. You have a diagram. You have your variable cost. Right? It's your variable cost. Okay, in a business. This is the time. This is the quantity. This is rupees. You have variable cost. Zero production, zero cost. One unit production, this cost. Second unit production, this is the cost. So it is based on the quantity you produce. Right? So when you are increasing your production, your cost increases. Similarly, you have fixed cost. fixed cost whether you produce or not 
you have to incur this cost. That is called fixed cost. Right? Whether you produce 100,000 pieces or zero pieces, pieces, still you have to incur this cost. So that is fixed cost. Right? Then you can parallel, like you can draw a parallel line, you can shift this up. Right? This is the parallel line. Then it is total cost. See? Zero production. Your fixed cost is there. No variable cost. This is the variable cost portion. This is the variable cost portion. So fixed cost. Basically, we are adding it, right? So this one and this one equal. So this is the total cost. Variable cost plus fixed cost. Otherwise, we have two graphs here. So it is single graph. Now. Then we have your total Revenue. This is the revenue line. Turnover revenue. Turnover. You see? Turnover line. Right? What happens here? See? From this point, zero to this quantity, you are cost line is above the revenue line. See? If you produce one unit, you will generate this much rupees. Right? But your cost would be this much. So, this portion you are making a loss. We take here this line right this is your cost this is your revenue so your loss is this much see earlier you had a big loss you have a smaller loss because your contribution, number of units you are producing has increased. So this contribution started coming in. So you have money towards settling your fixed cost. So, but at this point, your total cost line and the revenue line meets. So at this point, if you draw this way, your cost also the same. Revenue also the same. Cost equals revenue. So zero profit. That is break even quantity. This is break even when sales. Okay. So this is the point at which no loss, no profit occurs. From here, look at now. After this, draw a line this way. Your revenue is more than your cost. This is your revenue. This is your cost. So now you have a profit. Up to this point, negative or loss after this point it is profit so it is the point at which no loss no profit occurs that is called break even right this is the graph so you can erase these things and it will be a clear graph
So this is the break even. This is fixed cost, this is variable cost, this is total cost, this is revenue or turnover. Is that clear? Can I know whether it is clear or not? Break even. Two answers, two clears. What about others? If not, if not for even one person, I will repeat. Three. Dilanja, what is happening? Okay. Right? So, this is the break even. Now, let us go to the handout. Did you see the board properly? I was on the other board. Okay. If you saw it, that's good. Right. So this is the break even analysis. Break even analysis examine the short run relationship between changes in volume and changes is revenue, expenses, and net profit. So it is called CVP analysis. Definition and analysis to determine the point at which revenue received equals the cost associated with receiving the revenue, right? Cost associate revenue receives equals the cost associate. Cost is fixed cost and variable cost. Margin of safety, amount that revenue exceeds the break-even point. This is the amount that revenue can fall while still staying above the break-even point. Usage, this short-term decisions. How many units to be sold? How many units must be sold to achieve a target profit? Okay. That I have to explain. A profit effect, the interaction, new product services, then break even point, neither no loss, no profit, contribution, the sale price minus the variable cost per unit. It measures the contribution made by each item of output to the fixed cost and profit of the organization. Margin of safety, variable cost fixed cost, those things. Then this is the equation I worked out. There is a missing part here. There has to be a line here. Right? When you need to find, this is your equation for break even. Right? You can use the same equation to find out what is the quantity we have to sell in order to generate a profit, we say you have fixed. Okay, I'll go to the board. Right now, the equation is this, right? When it is not break even, the equation is like plus profit, right? So, when it is break-even quantity, VE here, this is zero, right? 
when it is not be we say we need to find out the quantity in order to generate 10000 rupees this is the profit we need so you add this profit here this is not zero then fixed cost plus 10000 divided by contribution per unit is called is the quantity we have to set so the same formula can be used to find out the break even when we want to find out the break even profit is zero when you have you want to know what is the quantity we need to sell in order to generate a profit you need to add the profit as a fixed cost right that is it Okay, this one. Please close this. This is the chart I showed you. This is the total revenue. This is the total cost. Up to this point, the loss making. After that, it is profit making. Margin of safety, difference between the budget and the actual sales and the break even point. May express in units so revenue terms. Right. Can we do with this example? Using the following data, calculate the break even point and margin of safety. Selling price is 50, variable cost is 40, fixed cost is 70. First, calculate the break even quantity. Right? And show me what is the break even quantity. Right. Do you want to see the handout? This is your selling price, variable cost, fixed cost. What is the break even? One minute job. 50, 40, 7,000. Okay, great. 7,000. Good. Selling price minus variable cost is contribution. Uh, total revenue divided by contribution is number of units. Right. What is the margin of safety? That is the difference between actual sales minus break even. 500. Great. Yeah. Okay. Right. Then we go to this is the solution. Then, then we work a target profit. When you have, what if the firm does not want to break even? It requires contribution per unit need to cover profit as well. Required profit, right? So that is the equation. Calculate this. Selling price is thirty-five. Quantity is, uh, sorry, variable cost is 20. So your margin uh, contribution is 15 rupees. Fixed cost 50 and you need a 10,000 profit. What is the quantity you have to sell? That is the first question. What is the quantity you have to sell in order to uh, generate a 10,000 rupee profit? What is the quantity you have to sell in order to generate 10,000 rupee profit? So here P is not 0, it is 10,000. Right, Malaga. Work out the uh, break-even asset. Okay, so basically 600 odd, if you sell, uh, you have a margin of safety. 
4000 minus 333. Yeah, right, Sanjeev. Right? So, Malaga has worked the break even. It is 333. So, 4000 minus 333 is margin of safety. Right. That's done. Right. These are the limitations of a break even point analysis. Break even analysis only supply side. We never discussed anything about demand. We thought whatever we produce, we will sell. Production equals sales. Whatever we can supply, the market will absorb. That's, a, that's not the actual case. So it is a limitation. Then we thought uh, fixed cost and variable cost both are the same. See, with the production increases, efficiency comes in. So variable cost normally reduces with the uh, larger the production. But here we expect both fixed and variable to be the same. Selling price remains constant. It can change. Efficiency remains unchanged. Volume is the only factor affecting the cost. Efficiency, we didn't bother. Time value of money, we didn't give any consideration. So issues are production equal to sales. Only look at supplier side. Efficiency, we didn't bother about it. We thought variable, only variable is the quantity. Time value of money, we didn't consider. Right? So that's all on uh, break even. Thank you. So if you have any questions, I am ready to answer now. If no questions, we can stop. If you have questions for the entire day's work, I can answer you. If anything, not clear. Otherwise, thank you. We'll stop here. Do you have any questions? Okay, thank you.